Hello everyone and I hope you all are having a wonderful day today and today we're going to take a look at modifying this cube projector. Now as if you couldn't tell by the title of the video I'm going to add an audio output to this device. Uh, the problem with it is is that it's a good device for what it is. It's very small, it fits in your pocket, you take it anywhere and it has a decent battery life. The only issue I have with it is its internal speaker is complete garbage. It sounds tinny, there's no bass, the volume's ridiculously low and if you have anything else running in the room like a computer, fan, air conditioner, you'll barely hear it. And the other issue I have with it is that the position of the speaker is mounted towards the direction of the fan, so the sound comes up through the fan. And the problem with that is, you get that effect when the fan's running of someone talking through a fan and it becomes really choppy. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, look for a fan in your house and try talking through it. You'll know exactly what effect I'm talking about. Now, I did find somebody else who did a similar tutorial online, but they kept the speaker in the device, and what they have done was they wired it in a way which allowed you to plug something in, it will turn off the speaker and route it out the audio jack, and when you unplugged it, it would use the internal speaker. I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to completely remove the internal speaker since I find it to be useless, and I'm going to just add an audio output jack anyways, because if I'm not using the internal speaker, most likely I'm going to be using an audio output of the device that it's uh, connected to. I have a link to this person's tutorial in the description if you guys are interested in watching it, and the other thing I will also need to mention is that this device only outputs mono, so it only has one speaker, and the issue with that is you're not going to be able to get both stereo channels. Uh, I'm not too sure how this device is wired. Some some of them, they'll have both channels coming through one speaker, and sometimes they'll just only have a, a left or the right channel coming through. I'm not too sure how this is wired up, so there's that. The other thing is, if you want both stereo channels, I'd highly recommend you either get an audio extractor that would look something like this, or you use the output of the device that you're trying to get the video out from. Hopefully it has a different audio output that you could use. So without further ado, let's move on to the tutorial side of this. Alright, so the next thing on the list is to find something that has some audio jacks that we could steal them from. In this case, I'm going to use an old headphone splitter, which still works, except I cut, chopped the end off to use it for something else. Uh, it's very simple open, just grab a flathead screwdriver and start prying into it, and it should pop apart. Like that. Now once you have it apart, you should notice that the jacks are on a PCB board, if not, that's okay, as long as you have the ability to access the pins underneath the jack as you can see here. That's all that really matters. Now the next thing you want to do is just disconnect the PCB from the rest of the casing. Keep that wire that we just pulled off because you will need it again later. And after that you can just go ahead and trim off the excess PCB, which is you don't really need at this point. I didn't want to risk damaging the pins by trying to desolder the connector off of the board, so I just left the board intact. And now, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and start stripping back your wires. Now once that's done, you'll see me just measuring up uh, a one end of the wire and making it a little bit longer than it should be to bridge both of these connectors like you can see here. Now what you want to do is you're going to bridge both left and right channels. So this way you'll get a stereo output from a mono signal. It'll still be mono however, but at least you'll be able to use both speakers that are connected. Now I've already went ahead and tinned both wires and now we just begin the process of attaching them to the connector. Now remember, like I said before, both left and right audio channels will be bridged and the last connector will be crowned. Now if you're wondering how you know which is which, I'll have a diagram up on screen now of when you would plug the connector in and how it would look like. Now here's the diagram that I was talking about, as you can see I helpfully labeled it for you guys. Uh, this way you can know which channel is which, uh, this is the direction facing inwards if you were to plug the connector in, just line up the three solder points with the three points on the jack, you have left channel as the first pin, right channel as the second pin, and the biggest pin is ground. And the next thing was to apply some heat shrink to the connector to make sure the wires stay put and the connector is protected from anything shorting it out and so on. Now to disassemble the projector, which is a fun bit, I'll, I'll, everything is pretty straightforward, just sort of pop these two caps off on the back here, the cover, two screws on each side, to 
take those screws out and then start the process of removing the top cover. So something interesting I'm going to do here is one of the screws for the speaker or cross threads. What I did was I took a flathead screwdriver, poked it underneath the screw head, and started kind of raising it up as I was unscrewing it. It's a little bit tricky to do, but once you get it, the screw does come out. Now as you can see with the speaker unmounted, uh, there's two wires, red for positive, black for negative. Now we're basically going to wire the positive up to the left and right channels of the connector we made and the black wire to the ground. Now after that you just want to cut the speaker out, start stripping back the wires and next we're going to start preparing to kind of join up the connectors that we just made for the first test room. So the next thing is to map out where the new connector is going to go, as you can see I fling the old speaker out of frame there. Now I went with the same idea that the person who made that other video did, which was mounting it through one of the screw holes. Uh, the next thing was to basically shorten down the wire all the way up to the heat shrink and put it through the hole. And as you can see here, it doesn't fit, and I do come back later with a drill bit, as you can see here, and just enlarge the hole using that, and that made it fit perfectly. And here I just add a bit of crazy glue for some good measure just to make sure the uh, connector doesn't want to come out on its own. Now I went ahead to see if the bracket would fit and it, of course I ended up having the same problem that the other person did. So I went ahead and used a pair of tin snips and cut that bit off and the bracket fit fine after that. And once that all looked good, I went ahead and started stripping off the wires on the connector and started joining them up to the ones on the projector for the first test. Next was to hook everything up and give it all a touch run and I'll show you guys some before and after clips. Now I'm not going to edit the audio at all, I'm not changing the levels or anything like that, I'm going to leave it as it was recorded so that way you guys can hear the difference and I'm pretty sure you'll notice it. For those of you wondering what I'm using for the test, uh, basically I'm using the Homebrew and the Homebrew App Store on the Wii U for the sort of sound test.
So the interesting thing about that test was that those weren't even powered speakers. So they don't use any batteries or anything. They just, you plug and play. And the interesting thing about that, that was one hell of a difference. It was so much more louder than I was expecting. I thought the limitation of the smaller speaker was because of its, you know, it wasn't getting that much power. But in reality, it was because of its size. So I found that quite interesting. And the other thing is the volume control still works. The only downside to this though, however, is that it's a mono output, but at least, you know, it's better than nothing. And for devices that don't have an output, and instead of getting an audio extractor, this will at least do the job for something that's quick, you know. And I'm really happy with this. So I guess the next thing that's left is to really just put the whole thing back together. So actually the next and final thing we gotta do actually before putting this back together is to sort of solder up all these wires and make sure they're insulated so they don't short. Now since the battery is right there at the bottom of the projector, what I thought was a good idea was to use the plastic cover from the headphone splitter just to kind of cover and shield the battery from any heat or, you know, solder that decides to pitch over there. Now sort of the last and final thing before putting the whole thing back together is just to bend the, uh, the joints over flat and start taping them up and make sure they're insulated. Now for the plastic covers uh, that go over the screw holes, I did have to trim the one down on the other side obviously because the connector is now in the way, but other than that it all went back well together and I'm going to skip ahead to showing you guys what it looked like. Now I'm going to have a couple of images up as the sort of closing bit of this video, some with some speakers and some without some speakers so you guys can get an idea of what it looks like. Now obviously this was a quick and dirty mod, it's not something that looks pretty, it literally sticks out the back of the thing and you know. What can you say? I mean, it works. It's, it's something that anyone can do with some tape and some soldering iron. Uh, almost anyone could do this at home. Now, the reason why I went ahead and did this video. Now, something interesting that comes up a lot is that the idea of doing a video that someone else has already done. Now, this is an interesting topic that I'm going to get into in a different video, but I just want you guys to know that don't be afraid to try something that someone else has already done because you know, being original is kind of hard on this website. And the whole premise that I want to get to is that even though you tell two people to paint a picture of a tree, their paintings are going to look completely different from one another with some aspects being very similar. And that's kind of the same point I want to make here. Even though the tutorial and the idea behind this video is exactly the same, the results, the way it looks, and the outcome are completely different. The path I took to do it and the path that the other person took to do it led to different results. And that's the interesting thing I want to point out. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed and leave a like if you did, leave a comment if you, you know, want to. And if you do go ahead and try this yourself, do tweet me a picture or send me it on Instagram and, you know, I'll have links to all that in the description and on screen. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll catch you on the next one.